Do you have an abdominal separation or a diastasis recti? If you do, then this video is for you. So my name is Sissy and I'm the um, head physiotherapist and the director of Vascular Potential Health and Performance. I'm a women's health physiotherapist as well as a nutritionist and I work with uh, mums as well as their bubs, um, helping them to live their best life. So you might see, oh, she's gone. My little one was just in the window there to benefit from working from home. Um, but onto the topic of this video. So if you have an abdominal separation, and that can be straight after birth, um, or giving birth, sorry, or that can be a couple of years afterwards. Or you might just want to be wanting to know how you avoid getting a severe abdominal separation during pregnancy and beyond. There are a couple of things that people don't talk about, um, that a lot of people don't know about either. And they have more to do with your breathing and your posture, and I'm gonna go through them today. So, all the core exercises in the world aren't gonna help you if things like just how you're breathing are perhaps not so conducive to a diastasis. We've been told for years that we should be breathing in our belly, and that's actually one of the number one mistakes that we can be making when thinking about an abdominal separation. When we think about breathing, so we generally use our diaphragm, we think about our ribs and our abs, obviously, as well. What happens when we breathe is we shouldn't just be breathing in our belly. We want to actually be breathing 360 degrees, and that means we want our ribs to expand slightly to the side, sorry, this way. We want a little bit of expansion in the back. And then obviously then there's that little bit of expansion that comes through the front. What can happen in pregnancy is because of that weight and the load and the, the baby itself in our um, belly, we just don't have that space to expand. Everything gets quite tight and we end up having to breathe sometimes up in through here, or we just end up restricting and then that breathing just can't happen the way it's supposed to. So maintaining that proper rib mobility and breathing in the right direction, not just all belly, can be really important for making sure that we don't get that big separation. If you think about it, if we're only breathing in our belly the whole time, then that's lengthening those ab muscles. You can see I'm exaggerating now. And if we're constantly exaggerating, pushing and lengthening those ab muscles, then we're always going to be putting pressure on that linear alba down through the front, which means we're never going to give that a chance to actually come together and heal up. So addressing the breathing is one of the number one and easiest things that we can actually work on. Like I said, you can pop your hands on here just to see where those ribs are expanding. And you want that expansion to the side, you want it a little bit in through the back. There are a couple of things that you can do to practice that, um, which I can do in another video, but thinking about your breathing is one of the first things to look at. The second thing that I see all the time is posture. So we all remember the posture that we had when we were pregnant, and that's very much that belly out, hinging in through the back, hips kind of forward, which tends to again happen with the bubs in there. That tends to be the most comfortable position for us, all that weight kind of coming forward. Can be a reason why we get so much back pain and SIJ pain in pregnancy and afterwards. A lot of the time that is because even though bubs out, we still kind of hang in this kind of position because it's nice and comfortable. It's a posture that I see in a lot of um, young uh, women and men, to be honest, who have that little bit of hypermobility. This position, what we're doing is we're just kind of hanging on all our ligaments. We're not actually using any of our muscles, but as you can see, Again, all that pressure is coming forward. So we're putting a lot of pressure through that linear alba, through our abs. And again, that's going to mean that we're never really going to get the chance for those muscles to come together and, and really heal up. Okay? So if you find you're someone that does tend to kind of hang out in this kind of space, if you're doing dishes and things like that, you're someone that maybe kind of leans up against the bench, for example, or if even when you're washing your hair or putting something up high, you tend to be someone that kind of just bend in the back like this, everything kind of coming forward, then that's one of the things you want to address as well if you are having issues with an abdominal separation. We want to think about being a little bit more engaged. So rather than hanging out in this position, we want to think about tipping everything and contracting everything, bringing everything back in. So if you think of your pelvis as a ball, in this position we tend to be balls tipped forward. So any water in the bowl is tipping forward. In that position, abs are lengthened. Again, they're stretched, so they're not going to be able to contract. 
So we want to think about bringing that ball back up to neutral, okay? So from here, we want to think about bringing that back in, that slight engagement, trying to bring hips together to ribs. And again, you'll see that just puts everything in a much better alignment, puts much less pressure through that linear ab alba and those abs, and it also enables us to engage our core that little bit more. One reason why we can be having issues in that separation is, yes, we core muscles, but that posture that we generally stand in for most of the day is going to be really, really important from here. Once you've figured out or can feel that postural change, we want to be mindful of how we're doing things during the day. When you reach for things, are you just doing that bending back, kind of reaching up overhead, washing your hair, you know, hinging when you're washing dishes and things like that? If so, then you can start to be a little bit more conscious of being engaged in through here, keeping that little bit of engagement as we're reaching up overhead. You know, as we're washing dishes, can we do something so that we're a little bit more engaged and contracted rather than just letting everything hang out? So those two points are really important to think about if you are worried about a, um, a, an abdominal separation or have one and it's just not resolving because they're often very much overlooked and can be really, really important with regards to resolving that separation or that diastasis recti. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or you can always send me an email, um, info in the, in the link below as well.